Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back in the garage working on the cycle cart. So stick around. Okay guys, since our last video, I've made a few improvements on the cart. Uh, namely, getting the tie rod set up. And uh, they're not on the cart right now, but I did have to cut away some frame here to make room for the tie rods because they want to occupy the same space as frame did. So I've also relocated this bar to inside the cockpit. We discovered it was hitting the ground because it was initially underneath the floorboard. So now it's inside the cockpit. Give you some place for your heel to sit and that's fine. So that'll work fine. Also I've added the steering column and uh, Mark Renegade made this steering wheel blank for me. And I got my quick release sort of mocked up on here. And then I've added the brake line and the throttle cables and we got the motor set up and running for the first time and broken in I mounted the disc brake mount um, so this is set up to where the bleeder is above the brake line let me get on the other side you can see that better so when you're mounting your brake caliper at least this type of brake caliper whoops sorry guys let's see if I get the camera in here you can see the bleeder valve which is here is above the brake line. So that makes it a lot easier to bleed the brakes later. Um, I've got my exhaust pipe on here. This is uh, from NR Racing. This is their straight back go-kart exhaust, or a mini bike exhaust rather. I did have to bend it a little bit. I uh, had to heat it up here and uh, use, use the bender to bend this down just a bit because this was trying to go above the body line, which is here. So I wanted it to exit out the bot at the back. So it'll exit the rear of the car down here like this below the frame rail the exhaust pipe will angle toward the ground a little bit uh, i am having trouble with my air cleaner so right now i've got the stock air cleaner on here and if i put the cold air filter which is this this filter here and the adapter it wants to occupy the same space as the brake uh, there's really no other, no other place to put the brake except i maybe I could have put it over here on this side of the sprocket, but I didn't really want the sprocket and the brake next to each other just because the grease and oil that comes off of this, not ideal for brakes. So I'm working with Mark Parnell to uh, uh, make a 90 degree bend, basically to get the air cleaner. Maybe I'll have it located here, maybe I'll have it located up, kind of in this space, or maybe I'll have it located back here. Anyway, to get it away from the brake and away from the um, uh, heat, if I can, so I've also added this frame rail, which I talked about in the last video, to gusset the rear end. I might have to gusset it more after we take it first first drive. We'll decide. But it needs more framing back here to prevent flex. Um, I've also cut out the bar that was here. It was a bar that went straight down from the, the seat area to here. And I have cut that out and put in an angled bar. The reason I did that, I mocked up an aluminum seat piece. And it basically had this angle. So I've remade the seat. Uh, and the bender, and I'll show you that right here. It's over here on the, on the workbench. Let me get this blower out of the way. So here's the uh, seat I made. Say I just I curled the uh, piece of aluminum around the edge just to strengthen it, and that works pretty good. And I made a second piece here that I'm going to install and then curve over that metal bar. And this is the seat bottom. So this goes in the car. About like that, so that uh, you basically have your bottom sitting on that, give you a little support uh, to support your legs and your feet, so your legs aren't so stressed out sitting on the flat bottom. Okay, so uh, that's kind of where we are right now, and I'm getting ready to put that. I guess on next side would be the seat. Go and get that in the car. So uh, we'll get working on that now.
Okay, so the seat's just uh, held in place with Clecos right now. I'll be using screws later. But next I'm going to curve this piece of aluminum around this tubing so it can be secured with rivets on the outside. And then this part will probably just be bent uh, square just to give it some strength. And then as they come up here, this will get bent over this top piece. So on my last one, I just hammered it over. This one, I think I will go ahead and use a bender to make a little cleaner bend. So anyway, this is coming together. And uh, yeah, looking good. Okay, so I got ahead and drilled some holes in the side and put some uh, screws in here. This is where the rivets will go. And uh, bent the top over to this top rail. Now, I'm not going to rivet this down yet because I know bodywork's going to go on top of here. So instead of drilling a whole bunch of holes now, I'll drill the holes when the bodywork goes on. That way, we're not drilling a whole mess of holes that are never going to be used. Um, I'm turning my attention now to the tie rods. So Mark Parnell at uh, Renegade Cycle Carts mailed me my tie rods. Now, these are very nice because these are the threaded tubes basically. The tie rod goes inside the tube. There's a little adjuster part here for your wrench. As you spin this in and out, it actually goes in and out. So it's got a right hand and a left hand thread, which is really nice. Uh, in the past, when I built my own tie rods, I've just used a quarter inch rod. I th threaded it and then what happens is you have to take the tie rod off and on to adjust it, which is really inconvenient. In fact, I might be upgrading my other cart, my ride cart to this, to this method because as you spin this, you open this little adjuster up. As you spin this, it you know lengthens it and then the other direction shortens it makes adjusting your suspension really super easy uh, it also comes with these little offset bushings i've got a set of them here i bought some more on uh, ebay package of them so what this does uh, it prevents this from binding up so easily as it travels so if it's just bolted onto here which is not on top it tends to bind a little bit and what i've decided to do is go ahead and do the same thing in here because this is not welded uh, Mark sells this set normally welded, which would, which would be basically set up just like this with your tie rod goes in there with a the nut and bolt. The problem is it tends to bind if you're not perfectly aligned. And through the travel with the arc of this of this right here, you can see it binds a little bit as it goes through. It's here binding right, binding on the inside. Here it goes this way, it's binding on the other side, on the back side. So I'm going to set, set this up with some of these offset bushings. I'm not sure if that's the right word for it, but anyway, it's a... Uh, they're designed to clear to help your tie rods not bind up as you go through the process. So uh, anyway, if you want to order some stuff from Mark, there is his info. Pause the video and take a look. All right, guys, he's got some great cycle car parts on there. He really helps our sport. And if you need something custom made, he's probably willing and able to do that for you too if you got a little bit of time. He did make my steering wheel blank, which is over here. So that's available on his, on his page right now as well if you want to build a Ferrari steering wheel. That's the shape of the original. So pretty cool not to try to get sued by Mr. Ferrari or Mr. Ferrari's family, but uh, we're just building something that we because we like it. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a longer bolt in here and get these bushings in there. Okay, so the tie rods are mocked up in here. We got those little bushings in there to um, uh, keep it from binding, which seems to be working really well. They're not binding any longer. You can see there's plenty of travel at full walk. What I'm having trouble with now is as I, as I go through the full lock, I see this other side kind of locked itself in place over here. Like it goes past center. So I'm going to put some sort of travel limiter on there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly because so, it goes in like that. This side doesn't seem to do that, but that kind of goes over and breaks over center as you turn. I may need to put some sort of a travel limiter on there so it doesn't bind up while we're driving and lock it, lock the wheel. Maybe it won't be a problem when the car, when the wheels are on it, give it some rolling resistance, but um, also I'm checking, uh, make sure that this clears here. Um, I'm still gonna make sure that I'm gonna put the wheels on it and put it on the ground and make sure that uh, as it's turning here, we're not gonna bottom out and bend or bind up on this bolt when the suspension goes through its travel. So we'll make sure that all works out because this is all new to me as far as uh, using this type of suspension so things getting in the way 
But that's all part of the design process. I may have to put the tie rods underneath. That might be a solution too. In fact, I might try that, see if that gets this out of the way of it. Um, it's not a big deal to put them on the bottom. I'll drop it down about an inch or so. Okay, so we're making good progress here. Okay, so I've had a busy couple days. Uh, been back out on the cycle car here. I did go ahead and mount the motor. Got the axle lined up, got the brake lined up. I've got the uh, throttle cable and the brake line in, and I put the tie rods. I did go ahead and put the tie rods underneath. That seems to help with uh, alignment. The next thing I'm doing, I'm going to add some gussets here with the frame. So I've already cut some steel, kind of notched it to fit in that space. And it's going to go right, right there at a 45 degree angle. Come back on there. This is round tube, three quarter inch, thin wall. Um, I'm using the round tube on this area because this will be visible inside the cockpit and the original car would have had round tubing. So, uh, And also round tubing supposedly is lighter weight than square tubing but uh, much more difficult to uh, cut because of all the, well, because it's round. So anyway, so I'm gonna put this in here, one on the other side, and then back here by the motor, a similar deal is gonna happen. Uh, let's see, this is the wrong way. This is gonna go here and here, like so. Uh, the idea is to strengthen this whole back end um, and so that the flex that might happen down here in the motor area Hopefully this little bit of gusseting here will prevent that from happening. Plus, having these you know pipes at 45s looks kind of cool, and it shouldn't get in the way of anything here. Um, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then once those are in, and this is all secured, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out and put a round tube here, probably from up here down to right around here, some a 45 degree angle, whatever that ends up being. Um, anyway. That is what we're doing right now. So I'm gonna get the welder out and tack those four tubes in place. Okay, so those front cross members are welded in place. Those look pretty cool right here. And the ones in the back, gusseted up to where the seat mount is at, down to where the, the engine mount is at. So this is gonna get welded, uh, final welded later. Just I just tacked it up on the areas I can reach. I gotta weld the back sides, uh, the back side of the weld and all around it. So. Um, after this, all this mock-up is done, we'll take it all apart and then finish welding. A lot of the stuff is not finished welded yet. So uh, next up, I'll cut out this bit and one at a time I'll do this because I don't want this thing to collapse. I don't think it will. It should be pretty rigid, but I don't want it to get out of, out of whack. So I'll cut this out and then I'll mount my piece that goes here. It'll pretty much set up underneath where this welded area is at. So that'll be next. Okay, so those angle bars are installed. At the rear, the seat at the um, cockpit area here, and then at the front, where I had to cut away this for the front suspension support. These are angled at 45 degrees. Um, this one back here is less than 45, but there's not enough room for a 45 because it must be much wider. So, But it looks appropriate, and I think that looks pretty cool, a lot better than those straight bars. And when the body works on it, when you look in the cockpit, you'll see this round tubing, which is going to be kind of cool. Uh, I did install a kill switch. So what this is, is uh, from Amazon... It's a momentary on switch. So this is what it looks like. Momentary on push button switch. So you can get these at AutoZone or Checker. Uh, I got this particular one on Amazon. Um, and we like the push button because you can't actually accidentally leave the car in the off position with the toggle switch. A lot of guys leave it in on or actually in the off position and then have a trouble starting it. They're pulling it, pulling it, pulling it, not realizing that it's in the wrong position. So the, the push button eliminates that. So that's why I like that. I forgot to mention, I did go ahead and weld on my quick release and the pitman arms. So those are ready to go. We're getting really close to being able to take this for its first drive. I'm really curious to see if we'll get much chassis flex back here. Um, hoping this is gonna be stout enough. I'm, a little, I'm just a little concerned that these three quarter inch tubes down here might be a little too light. Uh, if anything else, I might have to gusset them. But that's not a big deal. Um, I'm just uh, kind of making this up as we go along. Okay guys, so we're at the point where we can test and drive this thing. We discovered there is a little bit of a clearance issue on the front wheels. Uh, the rims are touching the kingpin, so we're gonna put some quarter inch spacers in there. Um, so a little bit of clearancing can be done, but we're gonna put some spacers just to get them away so they clear and so we have a better turning radius. Right now the turning radius is terrible. You can't turn around on the street. So I'll fire it up and we'll take it for a drive.
Okay, so the turning radius is no good. And this brake pedal is really awkward because it's slippery. I'm gonna put some traction or something on there to help your foot be more positive on there. But uh, runs pretty good. It's a little bit weird off throttle. That might be the uh, air cleaner. So I had to put that stock air cleaner back on here, but man, it goes like stink. It's pretty fast. Mission accomplished on the chassis, so uh, on to painting it, making a body work. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and get out in the garage and build something cool.